Welcome to Money Med School, where doctors come to learn about money. Today, I'm going to be talking about, you guessed it, the Doximity IPO. And specifically, how much, how to decide how much to buy. All right. Tonight is the night of pricing. Mm. Tonight, between 6 p.m. and 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you must confirm your IOI. So between 6 p.m. and 12 a.m. Eastern, the Doximity IPO price will be announced. Again, all dates are subject to change. This means that between 6 p.m. and 12 a.m., you've got to confirm your IOI with Fidelity. That means that you must confirm how many shares you would like to purchase. If you don't confirm tonight, then your shares will be canceled. Once the price is announced, you'll know how many shares you can purchase based on your budget, and the maximum investment is capped at $5,000. So, how do you decide how much money to invest? I'd like to take you through an exercise that we do as traders when we're deciding how much stock to buy, and compare that to how we decide to buy stocks for investing. Again, I'm not trying to turn you into traders, I'm trying to educate you on how stocks work, so that you can be confident investors. What's the difference between trading and investing? The time frame and the decision-making process. If you're holding a stock for a day to weeks, this is trading. If it's months to years or never, then it's investing. If you're investing, you decide to buy a stock based on the company's performance. But if you're trading, you decide to buy a stock based on the stock's performance. This is a good opportunity to point out some caveats and differences between deciding to buy an established stock that's been trading for a while and has a track record and an IPO stock which has never been traded publicly before. So let's start with investing. If you're investing, then you make most of your decision making up front when you're actually deciding whether or not to purchase the stock. You're trying to determine whether you think the company will become more valuable over time because when you buy stock, you're buying a share of the company and its future earnings potential. The information you use to help you decide is data based on the company's performance. What are its earnings? Is it consistently profitable? Does it offer dividends? If so, are they increasing or decreasing? Does the company offer a product or service that's trending, popular, in demand, and has the potential for a continued demand? This type of information is called fundamental analysis. This information is available for companies that have never been publicly traded, and you find it in the prospectus that the company submits to the SEC when it wants to offer stock for the first time. Here is an example of Doximity's prospectus. If a company has been public for a while, you can find this information on many websites, for example, finance.yahoo, just search the company's ticker symbol and you'll get all the information you need. This is an example with Apple, which ticker symbol is AAPL. Here's the summary that we were just looking at. Um, this goes over, you know, the stock prices, market cap, uh, PE ratios, various things like that. But when you're deciding on a stock to invest in long term, you want to look at financials. And this is the information that gives you a sense of how healthy the company is and what it's doing. So here's an income statement, for example. Total revenue. You know, they only made $325 trillion, so I don't know if they're doing so hot, but yeah, okay. Um, how much does the cost how much does it cost to, to make that revenue? $195 trillion. Meh. I mean I guess they've got a smidge of profit. I don't know. Um, anyway, you're looking down all of these numbers, and it just tells you the overall health of the company. Uh, earnings, you want to know earnings, financials, all of these types of things are really helpful for when you're deciding to invest in a company long term. Now, in contrast, if you're investing in it, or if you're, if you're looking to trade, if you're making a trade, if you're trading the company's stock, then you're looking at things a little bit differently. Since you're not in it for the long haul, you don't need to think futuristically about how the company will do over years and years. You want to predict how its stock price 
which is not necessarily the company's performance, uh, will move over the next day, hours, or weeks. The information that you use to decide this data is based on the stock price's performance, which is measured and displayed on a chart, as you see here. Up here in the corner, you got Apple's ticker, ticker symbol. Um, along the y-axis is the stock price. And currently it's trading at 133.75. And along the x-axis is time. You'd look at many things on this chart. You would look at the overall shape of it, the averages, the um, price changes, whether it's trending positive, trending negative, et cetera, et cetera. Many, many details here. So the information you use to decide this data is based on stock's price performance, which is measured and displayed on a chart like this, a stock chart. When you analyze data from the stock's chart, this is called technical analysis. So in contrast to fundamental analysis, you base your decision to purchase the stock on how it's performing in the market. This is data that is totally absent with an IPO. For example, hmm, here's Doximity's. It's ready to go, but it says here, this chart is not available. We have no data on this whatsoever, okay? So this data is totally absent within IPO, and that is why IPOs for trading are a total crapshoot. Not really an attractive thing to trade since you have no data upon which to make informed choices. When you make a trade, you must decide your plan for the trade before you make it. You don't just buy it and then see what happens. You plan your trade and you trade your plan. Kind of hard to do when you have zero information, <laughs> like on this. Um, so, ta-da! Pretty cool to see it ready to go though. We don't have any information yet. So what you want to know before entering a trade is, what is my time frame for this trade? Is it a day trade or a swing trade? Meaning, am I going to trade it only today or a few hours? Or am I going to trade it over a few days to weeks, which would be a swing trade? The next question is, uh, what is my risk? How much money are you willing to risk losing in this trade? This should be no more than 1% of the total amount of money in your brokerage account. That way, if you do sustain a loss, it's limited to 1% of the money in your account. It won't devastate you or hobble you. Losses are to be expected when you're trading, so your loss must be limited. In order to limit your risk, you need to decide when you will exit the trade, and this is called your stop. Next, you need to decide when will I take profits. Um, this is based on something called the ATR, which is the average true range, and that's the average amount that the stock price moves up and down from its current price. And this can be set anywhere from two to four ATRs. Um, but the thing is, I mean, that's just a technicality, but the thing is that when you have a, when you have a chart like this, I don't see any ATRs on there. I don't see anything on there. I see nothing. So you have no information upon which to base your trade. Um, and that's not really, that's not how you trade. Okay. So with an IPO, since you have no information, um, you have no way to make an educated guess as to how high the price could go. So it's hard to determine what is a reasonable target for that price, a reasonable profit target. And we also have no past performance to see how high or low it's gone before, which would help in determining a reasonable profit target as well. So in this case, time becomes an important factor. If you think it could go up $2 a share for a profit of $500 and you'd like to take that on the same day, then day trade it. If you hold it on, onto it for longer, it may go up much more, but your money is also tied in for longer, which is an opportunity cost. Once you know the time frame, you set your stops and you decide your profit targets, and you buy the stock. And then you watch it to see what it does. Hopefully you make a profit, but if you don't and the trade goes against you, then your stop will kick in and you exit the trade. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> That's trading in a nutshell. All of these skills take years to hone, 
And even then you're always learning. So this is a big giant oversimplification. Again, I want you to understand the overall concepts here. When you enter a trade, your main question should be, what is my risk? Not how much do I want to make? So I'd like to do a little demonstration here. And I'm going to demonstrate the difference between trading and investing using our Doximity example. So that when you confirm your IOI tonight, you will know your plan going in. You know exactly how much money you're willing to risk. Since we don't know the price yet, but the prospectus has given an expected range of $20 to $23 per share, let's keep our example simple and use a $20 share price and a $5,000 maximum investment. If the share price is $20 and the maximum investment is $5,000, then $5,000 divided by $20 equals 250 shares. That means that we can purchase 250 shares of stock for $5,000. Now let's determine our risk. Okay, 250 shares times $20 equals $5,000. This is our starting purchase. If the stock price goes down by $1 to $19 per share and we hold 250 shares, then the new value of our position is $4,750, which is 250 shares times $19. And we have lost $250. $5,000 minus $4,750 is $250. So we've lost $250. The stock price went down by $1, and we've lost $250. Another example, starting with 250 shares at $20 a share for initial investment of $5,000. If the stock price drops by $2, and now the stock price is $18, then the new value of our position is $4,500, which is 250 shares times $18. Our loss is $500, which is $5,000 minus $4,500. So our initial investment minus our current value of investment. I made a little table that gives you some examples, um, gives some further examples of this. So our uh, stock price was $20, the new value, the, well, not new value, but our original value was $5,000. If it goes down $1 to $19, the new value of the position is $4,750, and our loss is $250. If it goes down $2 to $18 per share, the new value is $4,500 and our loss is $500. If it goes down $3 to $17 per share, the new value is $4,250 and we have lost $750. If it goes down $4 to $16 per share, the new value is $4,000 and we've lost $1,000. So you get the idea. I mentioned acceptable risk, which is 1% or 0.5 to 1% of your total account size. So 1% of all the money you have in your brokerage account. So let's talk about how you calculate acceptable risk. Less than or equal to 1% of the total money in your brokerage account. And in this example, $250 is 1% of $25,000. So that means if you have $25,000 in your account, you should risk no more than $250, which means that if the stock price drops by $1 to $19, you're out. You're going to get stopped out, you exit, you exit the trade. So you would set your stop price at $19. So this table goes over that. Um, if your account is $50,000, 1% of that is $500, so you can tolerate a $500 loss, which means that you can go as low as $18, but once that price goes down to $18, you're out. Now, let's look at the flip side. 
how much profit you could make. I know I said that's not your goal when entering a trade, but I think it's important to see and understand. If your stock price, let's start down here at $20, our initial stock price, this table is inverted as compared to the other table. Uh, across the top, we got stock price, and the new value of the position, and the gain or profit that you make. So when our stock price is at $20, we you know we don't have any gain. That's where we started. If we go up by $1 to $21, then the new value of our position is $52.50 and our gain is $250. Uh, so you determine that by multiplying $21 times 250 shares, and that equals $5,250. And your profit is $250 because you initially invested $500. Um, now, so off your $5,000 investment, you have made $250, and that's a return of 5%, which is $250, um, which is your profit, divided by $5,000, which is your initial investment, times 100 equals 5%. That's how you calculate return. Which brings me to my next topic, the role of time. Time plays an important factor. The shorter you hold the stock, the smaller the price moves, and the smaller your profit. In order to make a bigger profit, you'd have to purchase more stock. When you purchase more stock, you take on greater risk. And that's trading in a nutshell right there. In our case, purchasing more stock is not an option. Our maximum investment is limited to $5,000. So our profits over the short term will be modest because the price usually won't swing up so high in a short period of time. And with a capped amount of shares and a total lack of stock performance history, and therefore not much data to determine a trading plan, this situation does not lend itself to day trading or swing trading. That said, if the price shot up by $10 on opening day with a limit of 250 shares, your profit would be $2,500, which equates to a 50% return in one day. 2,500 divided by 5,000 times 100 equals 50%. Now, $2,500 isn't a ton of money overall, but that's actually pretty great for a day's work. The question is, could you make more if you held it longer? If you held the stock for a longer period of time as an investment, you'd potentially have the opportunity to make more profit, given that the stock price would have a longer amount of time to increase. But how long would that take? And what if Doximity shits the bed in the meantime? The risk is that if Doximity underperforms, becomes irrelevant, gets knocked out by its competitors, or it meets any of the fates laid out in its risk factors portion of the prospectus, the stock price might stagnate or take forever to rise to a high profit, or it might just go down. All that said, uh, I return to my original statement that this is an interesting learning opportunity um, and that the limit of $5,000 makes this a modest investment that will likely see modest profits if it does profit. Think it through. <clears throat> determine your risk based on your total account size and determine how and decide how long you want to hold this stock so that when the price is announced tonight, you will be able to confirm an appropriate IOI for you. We don't have any data for technical analysis to trade short term and the data for fundamental analysis, investing, uh, looks promising, otherwise we wouldn't invest, um, but at least know your risk cutoff going in and how long you want to hold. If you want to trade it, it's gonna be a crapshoot given the zero data situation, but hey, there may be a window of opportunity especially if the underwriters have done well with hyping and getting some early buyer interest that shoots the price up initially. So determine your risk, determine your time frame, decide how many shares you want, and don't forget to confirm with Fidelity your IOI by midnight. All right, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Only 80 more subscribers needed to get a decent URL. A vanity URL. All right, thanks so much and have a good one. Don't forget, don't forget to confirm tonight. Bye, 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 midnight. <laughs>